Welcome. Hi, my name is Laura Dougherty, and I actually work at Southwestern University in Texas, but I'm helping to facilitate this program for you here today. Um, we are so excited that you're joining us for the University of Iowa. And um, beforehand, I just want to thank um, Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan for helping us put this program on for you. Um, when you have questions, just put them in the Q&A box and I'm gonna let Susan take over. Enjoy. All right. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us. I see we still have some students that are trickling in, but I'll go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Susan Dickinson. I am the Assistant Director for High Ability Recruitment in the Office of Admissions at the University of Iowa. And joining me today, helping answer questions in the Q&A, are my colleagues Sheila and Annabelle, who both recruit in the Chicagoland area. And so if you have any questions throughout our webinar, please feel free to drop those in the Q&A, and Sheila and Annabelle will be answering those in real time. In our presentation today, I'm going to cover some of the highlights of our campus, give you a better idea of what the University of Iowa has to offer, and then also go into some details about our process. We'll spend some time talking about admissions, financial aid, scholarships, and housing to give you a better idea of what to expect throughout your senior year, or for those of you who are younger, what to expect throughout your next coming years as you continue your college search. So as we get started, I want to start us off by giving you a better idea of what our campus looks like. We are located in beautiful Iowa City, Iowa, and depending on where you're located throughout the state of Illinois, we're a pretty quick drive. So if you're in the Quad Cities area, it's just about an hour on Interstate 80 to get to Iowa City. From Peoria, we're about two and a half hours away, about four hours from Springfield, and for most of the Chicagoland area, about three and a half hours to our campus. That's a great distance from home to school, close enough that you can get home when you need to, but far enough away that you feel like you're getting your own space and having your own adventure as a college student. So our campus is located along the Iowa River. So you can see in the photo here on my screen, the Iowa River runs through the center of our campus, and that sort of organizes us into the east side and the west side of campus. So everything below the river is our east side, and the center point of the east side of campus is this building right here in the center with the gold dome on top. That's our old Capitol building that used to be the Capitol building for the state of Iowa. The Capitol was moved out to Des Moines and the university took over that building and our academic buildings on campus sort of radiate out from that old Capitol area. So these five buildings here are known as the Pentacrest, and that's kind of the heart and soul of campus life at Iowa. So on that Pentacrest area, that's where you're going to see students walking back and forth from class to class, playing ultimate frisbee on the Pentacrest lawn, um, being able to um, meet up with your friends and, and walk from place to place with other students. It's kind of the central hub of where you'll find students on campus. These four buildings surrounding the Old Capitol are where a lot of our general education courses are going to be found and a lot of our other academic buildings are on the east side as well. The College of Engineering and the College of Education are over here on the left side of my screen. Our Tippy College of Business is located right on the right side of my screen here. Um, and then across the river, you'll find the um, health science side of campus. So on the west side of the river, you're going to find the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics. UIHC is a really phenomenal um, research facility and medical facility, and our students are going to have the opportunity to job shadow, volunteer, work part-time at the hospitals. It's one of the largest teaching hospitals on a college campus in the country, and that gives our students that are interested in the health sciences a huge boost in terms of gaining patient contact hours and practical experience in healthcare. Also over on the west side are some of our health science programs, like our College of Pharmacy, College of Nursing, and our Human Physiology program. That's where you're also going to find our athletic facilities. So this Saturday, we're excited that our football team will be back in Kinnick Stadium over on the west side. That's also where you'll find Carver Hawkeye Arena and our baseball fields, amongst other athletic facilities. So that's a little bit more about our campus and what our campus looks like. But right across the street here on the bottom of the screen. I'm going to flip my photo over. You'll find downtown Iowa City. And this is something that I think makes the University of Iowa really unique, is that we have such a great relationship with our community and also really close proximity to the downtown area. So just steps away from that old Capitol building in that Pentacrest area, you're going to find over a hundred different restaurants and cafes, a variety of different places for students to really enjoy. So the downtown district has festivals throughout the summer and the fall. 
fall and really great opportunities for students to get engaged with the community, to try new restaurants, to go to a great local coffee shop. We have a lot of the national chains in the area too. You'll find a Starbucks and a Chipotle and a Target in the downtown district, but there's also a ton of really great local restaurants and coffee shops and places for students to really get to explore our local community. That I think is one of a, a lot of our students' favorite things about being a Hawkeye is that you're not only a student on our campus, but you're embraced as a citizen in our community as well. And all of the great fun that comes along with being in one of the best college towns in the country. Now, I also want to tell you a little bit more about who makes up our student body at the University of Iowa. We have just over 31,000 total students on our campus. That makes us one of the largest colleges in our state, but we're one of the smaller colleges within the Big Ten. So we're large enough to still have that classic Big Ten experience, but we're small enough that you're going to be able to really access all of those opportunities right away as a first year student. You don't have to wait until you're a junior or a senior to do an internship or get involved in research. You're gonna have access to all of those great opportunities as soon as you set foot on campus as a freshman. Now, in our current incoming first year class, we have around 4,500 total students that are in our entering first year class this year. A little over half of them are from the state of Iowa, and the rest of those students are coming from 43 states and 43 countries. So you're going to meet students that are coming from all over the country and all over the globe to continue their education at Iowa. Now, in terms of where our students are coming from, our number one most represented state is our great state of Iowa. Illinois is number two on that list with close to a third of our students coming from the state of Illinois. Also in the top 10, you'll find other states in the Midwest, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Missouri, but you're also going to see at number five, California. Um, also in that top 10, Colorado and Texas. So again, a great testament to the University of Iowa experience that we have students that are choosing to come from all over to continue their education at the University of Iowa. So I'm going to take a moment here to share a little bit more about our admission process. And I just want to be clear that things are looking a little bit different for this year's senior class. So for those of you that are high school seniors this year, we are test flexible. So if you have not had the opportunity to take the ACT or the SAT, we know a lot of you are trying to take those exams and they keep getting canceled. That's okay. You can apply to the University of Iowa with or without a test score. At this time, we still are requiring an ACT or SAT for the incoming class of 2022 and later. So if you are a high school junior or younger, at this time, we are still requiring an ACT or SAT. So I'm going to kind of split this slide into two different sections here. First, we're going to talk about the process for students with a test score and then for students without a test score. So if you do have a test score in ACT or SAT, we do encourage you to report that on your application. If you have a test score, we're going to use an admissions formula that's listed here on the screen called the RAI or the Region Admission Index. This is a formula that allows us to take into consideration your test scores, your GPA, and the number of core courses that you took as a high school student. So we're going to take that information and plug it into the formula that's listed here on the screen. That will generate your admission score and the score that we're looking for for non-resident students is a 255 or higher. If you have that 255 or higher, you're automatically admitted to the university into our programs in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. So that will give you an opportunity to study in any of those majors in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. We do have opportunities for direct admission to programs in the Tippy College of Business, the College of Engineering, Public Health, nur and Nursing. So I'll give you an example with our Tippy College of Business. If coming out of high school, you have a 26 or higher on your ACT or a 1230 or higher on your SAT, and a 3.6 or higher GPA, you would be eligible for direct admission to the Tippy College of Business, meaning that you start in that program right away as a first semester student. If you don't meet those direct admission criteria, you would start as a pre-business student, you would take one year of prerequisite courses, and as long as you get A's and B's in those courses, you can earn your way into the Tippy College of Business as a sophomore. There's not a limited number of students that we accept direct admit for business, engineering, or public health. You're really only competing with yourself to get the marks that you need to get into those programs. And that's something that we think um, really lends a, a, an air of collaboration to our programs rather than competition. The one program that is slightly different is the College of Nursing, which does have a limited amount of students that they accept into that program. 
So that's going to be the process for students that do have a test score. If you do not have a test score and you're a high school senior this year, again, that's okay. We encourage you to apply for admission, send us a copy of your high school transcript, and submit a personal statement. If you're applying to us using the common application, you can simply submit the common app personal statement as your writing sample. And we'll be able to make your admission decision based on those pieces of info. We are on the Common App as well as the Coalition App, and we also have our own university application that you can find on our website. So it's easy to apply to the university. You can find us at any of those three locations, and the best time to apply is now. We continue to accept applicants for scholarship consideration until March 1st of your senior year, but we do encourage you to apply in the fall semester, and we tend to receive the bulk of our applications in the fall semester. It's typically about a two to four week turnaround from the time that you apply to the time that you hear back with an admission decision since we accept on a rolling basis. So I would really encourage you to work on those applications as soon as possible. And again, with or without a test score, if you are a high school senior, you can be considered for admission to the university, direct admission to those programs that I talked about earlier, and be considered for university scholarships as we are test flexible for this year. I know that's a lot of info about our admissions process. So if you have questions, keep those coming. Annabelle and Sheila are happy to answer those questions in the Q&A. So again, feel free to drop those questions in the Q&A as we get ready to move on to our next topic here. So one of the reasons that we encourage students to apply in the fall semester is so you have plenty of time to apply for housing. Our housing application is going to open up this year on January 7th. And housing is done on a first come first serve basis at the University of Iowa. Now, you don't have to accept your offer of admission in order to apply for housing at Iowa. When you submit your housing application, there is a $75 application fee. That fee is non-refundable, but it's also non-binding. So again, you do not have to commit to us in order to fill out your housing application. You're basically just saying, if I choose Iowa, I want to live on campus. The first step is to just submit that housing application, which again opens up on the 7th of January. The second step is to, uh, to explore some of your options of where you might want to live. We have a variety of living learning communities that are available, so students can live on a residence hall floor with other students that share a major, an academic interest, or even an identity. So some examples of that might include our BYS living learning community for women in science and engineering. We have our all in LLC for LGBT identified students, UNIDOS for Latinx identified students, people in engineering, biz hawks for students in our Tippy College of Business. There are a variety of different options available. And that can be a great option for students that want to live with other students that have that same shared interest. If you live in a living learning community, you're also going to have a course in common with every student on your floor. So that can be a really great way to help you make connections, have some built-in study buddies, have someone to walk to class with on that first day. The next step is going to be to find a roommate. And there's a variety of different ways that students will find their roommates at Iowa. Some will use our Facebook page for the incoming class. Once you've been admitted, you'll be invited to join the Facebook page for the class of 2025. And you can, if you want to, post a short bio about yourself in the Facebook page and find your roommate that way. Other students will instead use the housing application itself. You'll fill out a brief profile, answer some questions about what temperature do you like the room, do you sleep with a fan on, that kind of thing, and the housing application will show you a list of other students that answer those questions similarly. That can be a great way to find a roommate as well. The final step in the process happens the summer after you graduate, and that is when we actually have students pick their own rooms. So you have a ton of control over this process and where you live, but we have students select their rooms in the order that they filled out their housing application. So the earlier you fill out that housing application, the more likely you are to get your top preference for where you want to live. Any questions about the housing process at Iowa, feel free to drop those in the Q&A so that Annabelle and Sheila can answer those for you. And then one final piece of the process is understanding financial fit. We do understand that this is a very unique conversation and that financial fit is different for every family, but we want you to know that there are a few steps that we recommend that every incoming first year student take to make sure you're maximizing your options at the University of Iowa. The first is to fill out a form called the FAFSA or the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. The FAFSA is a government document that allows students to be considered for need-based aid through the federal government and through the university. 
When you fill out your FAFSA, you can include up to 10 different schools on the form and send your financial information to 10 different places. So we would highly encourage you when you fill out this form to list the University of Iowa as one of those 10. That form will take in some information about your family's financial situation and will allow us to consider you for need-based aid. In order to maximize your consideration for need-based financial aid, we want to have you submit that FAFSA by the 1st of December. So we've got about six weeks left to get that FAFSA submitted for priority consideration. Another important step in the process is scholarship consideration. We do have an award called the National Scholars Award that all of our incoming first year non-resident students are going to be automatically considered for. That scholarship is going to be based on the information that you submitted in your application for admission. So if you did include a test score in your application for admission, that will be considered in scholarship consideration as well. But you can still be considered for that National Scholars Award even without a test score. And so you will typically find out if you are receiving that National Scholars Award within about a month or so of being admitted to the university. You can continue to update your academic information through your senior year until April 1st. So if your grades bump up after fall semester, if you are able to take or retake that ACT or SAT, go ahead and send us that information. As long as we have it by in our office by April 1st, you can be reconsidered for those scholarships. We also have a great resource called the Iowa Scholarship Portal, which is basically a big database that you'll have access to once you've been admitted that's going to allow you to search for additional scholarships through different departments or programs. Some examples might include the Tippie College of Business and the College of Engineering, who both offer a number of scholarships for incoming first year students. So that's a great resource to check out as well. We are going to send out our final financial aid offer letters in mid to late February. So what I encourage you all to do is to submit your FAFSA, apply for scholarships through the portal, hang with us until mid to late February when you get that offer letter. That's what will really allow you to compare your cost of attendance at Iowa with other schools that you might be considering. So that is a lot of information about what to expect throughout your senior year. You have until the 1st of May, your senior year, to make your final decision and accept or decline your offer of admission. But now I'm gonna switch gears a little bit here and tell you what life might be like if you do choose the University of Iowa. And I wanna start out by talking about academic life on campus. We have over 200 areas of study that we offer for students to choose from. That includes majors, minors, and certificate programs, and we really encourage students to use all of their options and to study in a variety of different areas. At Iowa, we make it really easy for you to mix and match from programs to take the courses that you're interested in that are going to best prepare you for whatever your goals are after college. In our graduating class of 2019, over 70% of our graduates graduated having studied in multiple areas. So you really do have that flexibility to mix and match different academic programs. Some of the things that we're really well known for, I mentioned healthcare earlier. With the University of Iowa hospitals and clinics right on our campus, we have a really strong presence throughout the nation for the health sciences. So whether you're interested in pre-med, pre-PA, pre-PT, nursing, radiation sciences, pharmacy, we have excellent programs and a lot of great opportunities for you to engage in hands-on learning in the health sciences. Our Tippy College of Business is a top 25 public business program, and so we have some great majors available for our potential business students as well. Our College of Engineering is ranked very highly within the Midwest and also has some really small class sizes and unique opportunities for our engineering students to be engaged in their engineering courses while also learning outside of the College of Engineering as well. Our sport and recreation management program offers internships and practical experiences with top ranked teams across the country. And then we have one of the top ranked English and creative writing programs in the world. So a lot of great things that we have to offer at the University of Iowa. But I think the biggest thing to know is that you have the opportunity to really put together an academic program that's going to be meaningful and impactful for you. You'll work each semester with an academic advisor who's going to make sure that you're on track to graduate. We have a four-year graduation guarantee for many of our majors, making sure that you're going to have access to the courses that you need to graduate on time. And in terms of class sizes, we have a 15 to 1 student to faculty ratio. Although we are a larger institution, you're going to have a lot more smaller classes than you might expect. University-wide, over 80% of our courses have fewer than 30 students in them. And 
less than 4% of our courses have more than 100 students. So there's some really great opportunities to get to know your professors, to engage in those experiential learning options, and to have a really good community within your academic program as well. So definitely a lot to love at the University of Iowa. And one thing that we really prioritize on our campus is the opportunity to learn outside of the classroom. So we want to make sure that not only are you taking advantage of those opportunities to get to know your professors and are having a great experience in class, but we want to make sure that you're taking what you learn in the classroom and applying that in a real world setting. We have a number of different experiential learning opportunities. One of the most popular is research. As a tier one research institution, we have almost all of our full-time faculty that are involved in some type of research in their field. So that means that your professors are on on the cutting edge of creating new knowledge in their field of study. And they're bringing that into the classroom every day. And so whether you're in the health sciences or in dance or music, there are gonna be opportunities for research and creative scholarship that you can get in right away as a first semester student. About a third of our undergrads are involved in research in some capacity. We have research facilities like the Iowa Neuroscience Institute they are doing um, research on diseases like Parkinson's. We have, as shown on the screen here, the National Advanced Driving Simulator. They're doing research on texting and driving, distracted driving, um, and they're also doing research on self-driving vehicles. So some super cool things that are happening in our community as well. So research can be a great option to get involved in. We also have a ton of students that are interested in study abroad. Last year, we had Hawkeyes in over 70 different countries. And so if there is a place in the world that you want to get to, odds are Iowa can help get you there. That can be a great way to take your University of Iowa experience and bring that into the wider world. We have full year programs, semester long programs, or some shorter two to three week programs. A student that I work with named Mia Batani did a 10 day experience in Greece over the winter break last year. She is a pre-physician assistant student and she was able to actually shadow some surgeons in Greece. So she spent 10 days there learning more about the country and the culture and was able to shadow in a hospital as well. We had a student who graduated in May of 2020, Walker McDonald. Walker did a global internship. So he actually spent the summer before his senior year in Sydney, Australia, interning with an international law firm. That really gave him an idea of what it was like to work in a law firm, confirmed his choice to go to law school, and he's currently in his first year of law school at the University of Iowa. So there's some really incredible programs that you can get involved in through study abroad. The most important thing is to tell your academic advisor early so we can make sure we can fit that and keep you on track to graduate. We also have a lot of students that are engaged in really cool internships or experiential courses right on campus. So for example, students that are in our Tippy College of Business are going to have a requirement called Tippy RISE. That stands for Research, Internship, Study Abroad, or Experiential Course. So experiential courses may have a student, for example, in the marketing program that's working with a small business in downtown Iowa City to help them overhaul their marketing plan. That's allowing students to expand their professional network, to build their resume, to build a portfolio that they can share when they're applying for full-time jobs. And that's some great experience that students are having to build toward their future goals. We also have students in our nonprofit management certificate program that are working with nonprofit organizations throughout our community as well. We had a recent graduate in 2019 who interned with Feeding America during her time in the program, and that turned into a full-time job. So she's currently working at their headquarters in Chicago. Um, her name is Kaylin Harris. And so she was able to turn that internship experience into a full-time job. And that's why we really prioritize experiential learning at Iowa is to give you those really um, transformational experiences that can help shape your goals for the future. So that's a lot of what we're going to help to do to prepare you for your future goals, but we also want you to have some fun on campus. I think one of the best parts about attending a larger Big Ten school is that vibrant campus atmosphere. We have over 500 student orgs on campus, 24 different teams that compete in Big Ten athletics. If you are an athlete in high school and want to continue that in college, we have 60 different club and intramural sports. Game day in Kinnick Stadium is an amazing experience. And our Division of Performing Arts also has over 400 performances each year. So there's a ton of different ways to get involved. 
I will often tell students that college is your opportunity to try something new. So if there's a passion that you've had for a long time and you want to continue playing intramural volleyball as a college student or continue in choir or orchestra, that's wonderful and can be an amazing way to establish a community on campus. But also find something new that you've always wanted to try that you have the chance to do during your time in college. I think that can really help you to create some lasting friendships and really establish that strong sense of community on campus. I think that sense of community is something that you'll really find at the University of Iowa. And one way that we show that is through one of our favorite traditions, which is the Hawkeye Wave. So you may have heard um, over the past few years, we've started a new tradition during our football games at the end of the first quarter, all 70,000 fans, our team, the opposing team, and all of the coaches will turn towards the University of Iowa Children's Hospital, which looks right into Kinnick Stadium and wave at the kiddos that are being treated at the hospital. And I think that's a really great way to showcase the connection between our campus and the University of Iowa hospitals and clinics, and also that strong sense of community that you'll find as a Hawkeye. It really is a special place, and we're excited to be able to share more of that with you. So all of these different things that our students are involved in, both inside and outside of the classroom, are leading them to some really incredible experiences once they graduate. University-wide, we have a 95% placement rate, meaning that 95% of our graduates are employed full-time or enrolled in a graduate program within six months of graduation. And all of those things that I've just talked about are leading those students to the dream job or to the dream graduate program. We had a 2019 graduate named Angeline Vanley, who was really involved in our University of Iowa Honors Program. She did research, she volunteered at the hospital throughout all four years of college. She was really involved in building a sense of community within the Honors Program and highly involved within her major as well. And all of those different opportunities that she had as a student led her to a successful application to the Carver College of Medicine. So she's currently a second year med student at the University of Iowa. We also have some students that have some really cool experiences in the arts. Um, a graduate in, I believe, 2017 named Christian was highly involved in our theater program. He was involved behind the scenes. He did some stage managing and also did a lot with our theater program in light design. He is currently one of the chief light technicians for Kelsey Ballerini down in Nashville. So there's some really incredible things that our graduates have gone on to do. And I think the established alumni network that we have at the University of Iowa also leads to some really great options for our students. You're graduating into a network of alums that spans the state, the country, and the globe. There are Hawkeyes all over, and it's great to be able to make those connections even after your time as a student has ended. So as we wrap up our presentation today, if you have any final questions, be sure to drop those questions in the Q&A so that Sheila, Annabelle, and I can answer those for you. Um, I also want to mention um, that if you would like to connect with us in other ways, we have a variety of different ways that we want to connect with you. You can feel free to contact us by phone or by email, but each of you has an assigned admission counselor once you've applied and been admitted to the university. So once you've been admitted, you'll be able to access your admissions profile and find the contact information for your admission counselor. That person can really be your go-to throughout your whole senior year if you have any specific questions about the process, but you can feel free to connect with any of us with any questions that you may have. I would encourage you to follow us on social media. Our Instagram page has some great student takeovers where you can learn more about what a day in the life of a University of Iowa student may look like. We also have a great YouTube channel that will have a video walkthrough if, you're, if you have any questions about your application and some other videos that will give you a better idea of what downtown Iowa City and campus look like as well. And then if you can go to our website for more information about other virtual programs that we may offer, as well as the opportunity to connect individually with one of our admissions staff. If you'd like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one Zoom appointment, we'd be happy to meet with you one-on-one -on -one and answer any individual questions that you have. So thanks so much for joining. We're super proud of the experience that we offer to our students at the University of Iowa. I love being a Hawkeye and I'm really proud of the things that the students I work with accomplish every day. And we hope that you are able to, again, learn more about the University of Iowa experience and come and check us out. So thanks for joining us today. Again, we'll answer any remaining questions in the Q&A, but if you don't have any other questions, have a great rest of your afternoon and go Hawks.
And once I end this, which it doesn't end for another 15 minutes, so we do have time for questions. But once I end this, you will get uh, a survey questions. Uh, so please answer those. But um, if you want, want to ask questions, please put them in the Q&A and we've got some time. All right, I'm gonna answer a few questions live here. We have a question from Mina. Is Iowa a research one institution? Yes, we are. Um, so all of our full-time tenure track faculty are engaged in research in their field. And um, so there are research opportunities in all of our academic areas of study. Um, one option that students have is to work with a resource called iCrew or the Iowa Center for Research by Undergraduates. And iCrew can help get students connected with different research opportunities. Great question. All right, Kelly asks, are there places for people to park their cars? Yes, parking is a little bit limited. So in terms of where you would park as a first year student, if you are living in the residence halls for your freshman year, most of our students are gonna be parking in the Hawk lot, which is about a 15 to 20 minute bus ride from campus. So it is a secure lot. You know that your vehicle will be safe there, but you're not gonna really be using your vehicle to get around campus. Most students will walk or take the bus to get around campus in downtown Iowa City. So instead of using your car to get around, you'll be getting around that way. Your car can be there if you need to get back and forth from school to home. We also have some great options for um, busing to the Chicagoland area if you're from the Chicagoland area. Um, and if you are not planning to bring a vehicle, that is an option for you as well. Haley asks about fees for the application and for housing. So our application fee for admission is going to be a $40 application fee. Our housing application fee is $75. The housing application fee is non-refundable, but it is also non-binding, so you don't have to commit to us in order to fill out your housing application. Uh, Lindsay asks for pre-PA, um, do we apply to any specific college? So you would apply as a um, pre-PA student that would be within the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Pre-PA is considered a track and not a major, so you would have to choose a specific major. Most common majors for pre-physician assistant would be things like psychology, human physiology, biology, something in the natural sciences but it could really be any major. Um, and most of those would be within our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Ariana's question about the College of Nursing. If you meet all of the requirements to apply direct admission to the College of Nursing, you will receive the supplemental nursing application through your admissions profile once you've been admitted. Um, I would encourage you to apply for admission soon as the early action deadline for the College of Nursing is coming up in just a few weeks. All right, Kelly asks, do freshmen have to live on campus? No, um, freshmen are not required to live on campus. However, um, each year about 95% of our incoming first year class does choose to live on campus. All right, Alexandra, if you are admitted to the university but not to the nursing program, you could start out as a pre-nursing student. You would take two years um, to complete your prerequisite courses and you could apply again to the College of Nursing in your sophomore year to begin your junior year. The time difference, if you are um, not admitted directly and apply as a sophomore, it would be one extra semester. So not a full extra year, but just one extra semester. All right, Kelly, we do have a computer science major. We offer computer science within our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, and we also have a computer science and engineering major within our College of Engineering. And yes, Ariana, um, we do have, uh, if you're taking physics in your senior year, that will count as well. And then Ashley's question about campus safety. Um, these are always great questions to ask, and I think that um, we have a lot on campus to help students feel safe and secure and to respond to any incidents that do come up. Um, we have the Iowa City Police Department works closely with campus police to patrol campus and the surrounding area. We also have some options for a night ride and a safe ride. So night ride would essentially be an evening bus that operates during later evening hours so that if you don't want to walk back and forth from different places, you can take the bus. Um, safe ride would in some ways be like Uber, um, it's, except it's through the university and a, a public person from the public safety department would be able to pick you up and take you um, back to where you're headed within a few blocks of campus. Um, I think campus is really well lit, which I know has always helped me feel safe on campus as well. Um, and I think that there are, you know, obviously we want students to make good choices to keep themselves safe, but I think there are a lot of resources for students to feel um, safe on campus as well. 
All right, I see we have a few more folks that are still here. If we have any further questions, take a moment and drop those in. We're happy to answer those. Again, ask while you can. <laughs> you have the people who make the decisions here, so <laughs> who have all the answers. Oh, here we go. You have a few more. All right. McKenna, diagnostic medical sonography would be under our radiation sciences program. So you would apply to the university with radiation sciences as your major of interest. And Ashley, great question. So our College of Pharmacy, there are a few different routes that students can take to attend the College of Pharmacy. You would start out as a pre-pharmacy student, but we do have an option for a um, assured admission route where you can apply as an incoming freshman and know that you will have a place in the doctoral program for the College of Pharmacy. Um, going in right away. And so for those students, it would be a six year program to graduate with your PharmD. The first few years are going to be a lot of science courses, primarily focused on chemistry, but also some courses in the biological sciences as well, um, including foundations of biology, anatomy and physiology, those types of classes. Um, so there is an assured admission route or you can apply at a later date as well. We do encourage students to take, um, there's a, a one semester hour course called Intro to Pharmacy that we encourage students to take in their freshman year if that's something that they're considering. All right. And Haley, um, if you have specific questions about the general admission requirements, feel free. I can also scroll back to that slide here. We are going to encourage students to submit if you have ACT or SAT test scores, we'll encourage you to submit those. Um, if you don't have ACT or SAT scores, we are test flexible for high school seniors this year. We are going to look at your test scores if you have them the courses that you've taken in high school and your grade point average. If you do not have an ACT or SAT score, we will ask you to write a personal statement as well. And Stella, our um, program would be Criminology, Law and Justice is the program that we have that would be related to criminal psychology. Middle 50% for GPA and test scores. Average for GPA is a 3.76. Middle 50% for test scores falls between a 22 and a 29. And yes, Ashley, we have our main library. I'll scroll back to my campus slide here. We have our main library, which is really conveniently located on campus. It's gonna be right down here by the river. And then just across the street from the library, if our photo continued a little bit further to my left, um, you would find our campus rec and wellness center. It's one of the top campus recreation center in the country. Um, it is fairly new within the last five to 10 years um, and has a, a lot of really phenomenal resources for students to be able to use. Um, so that would include things like fitness courses. There's a nutritionist within the rec center um, in addition to all of the equipment that students will have access to. And Mina, our middle 50% for SAT is an 1130 to a 1330. Actually, our, um, for ACT, middle 50% is between a 22 and a 29. A true average would be close to about a 26. We have a few more minutes, don't be shy. Again, if you have a question, now's the time to ask it. And yes, Mina, for um, this year's senior class, for our incoming class of fall 2021, we are test flexible. If you have an ACT score or an SAT score, we do encourage you to submit that, um, but it is not required. Students can be admitted to our programs, can be considered for scholarships without a test score. However, it will never hurt you to submit an ACT or SAT score. It can only help you. All 
All right, Susan, what do you think? <laughs> I think we're ready. Thanks everyone for tuning in and have a great day. Go Hawks. All right, thank you everyone. Like I said, you're gonna get a short survey. I wanna thank um, the Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan for putting this on today. Uh, we're very grateful. And uh, I am from Iowa, so I will say this, I didn't go to Iowa, but I'm, I love the University of Iowa. So I agree, go Hawks. Have a great day, everybody.